Hello traders. So this video is really going to be talking about the um, three wise men. Okay, we're going to be talking about um, how to enter the market using the Bull Williams strategy, um, which is the three wise men. Okay, for this uh, strategy, I need a few things, and the first thing is obviously the Bull Williams alligator, and the alligator is made up of three different moving averages. So you can. If you look at my other two videos on the Bull Williams, I go, I explain what those are. But essentially, what you have here, the blue line is your um, your jaw, the red line is your teeth, and the green line is your lips. And collectively, that's the alligator head. So when it's pointing down, like it is here, it is hungry. It's eating up price. In other words, um, we are trending down. Okay. And on the other side of the coin, when it is pointing to the upside, and open like this, we are hungry and we're eating up price and we're trending up. When we are sleeping like this, we are ranging, don't really want to be trading in this type of market. Okay. Um, the other part of this is the awesome ladder. ladder. It's also based on two moving averages, a 5 and a 34, and uh, the difference between the two, the calculation of the difference between the two, which gives us our momentum. Now guys, um, keep these settings as they are. Uh, Bill Williams spent a lot of uh, time and effort researching this and making sure that these were the correct values that were needed. Okay, and um, a, a lot of it is to do with fractal geometry as well. So unless you are a mathematician that fully understands all those concepts, um, keep the default settings as they are. It'll save you a lot of pain in the in the future. Trust me on that. Okay, uh, so wise man number one. So let's just get rid of this circle. So wise man number one is essentially a signal bar in relation to the alligator. Okay, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a bar that is indicating a change in direction and that bar is happening over here. Okay, that's a bit big. Somebody's going to be saying which bar are we talking about? Okay. So we're talking about this pin bar here, and I'll zoom in for us as well. Okay, so what is happening on this pin bar? So just let's just look at price action here. We're running down quite aggressively, and then all of a sudden we're hit with this signal bar here. Okay, now before we go any further, to save yourself a lot of pain and suffering you need to make sure that your levels are drawn in, okay? If you don't understand levels, I do have a video on levels, but essentially it is your support and resistance areas, okay? So in this case, I have two in this area here. This is the one, I've got this tail here, and I've got this tail to the upside, okay? I'm not going to explain more on levels, otherwise we're going to drag on forever. Let's just go back to the time frame that I was using. Okay, now um, one thing I didn't explain is I'm using a six minute time frame for this video. It really just because the market is is not really trending at the moment. We're ranging on the higher time frames. So essentially what we're doing is we're moving. Uh, if you want to get in on the trades, the six minute is fine. And trading a South African um, Aussie using this, I'm getting 400 pip moves either direction so it's it's a worthwhile setup okay so wise man number one so I have a signal bar now the signal bar is happening near a level okay so that is my first scenario that I need to look for it is definitely near a level therefore I need can pay a little bit of attention to it okay the second thing I want to know is I want to know whether the signal bar uh, sorry, where the price has been moving away from the alligator or it's been moving parallel to it, okay? So in order to do that, I draw a line through price, so where price crosses the alligator head, which is this bar here, okay? And we are trending to the downsides, so we should be on the top of that bar there. Okay, so I draw a line down like that. It doesn't necessarily have to follow price, it's really only where it crosses through the alligator here. You can see that it crosses through. I then draw another line and I want to know where the red line here, 
Okay, in other words, where is the teeth in relation to price? So where did it cross through the alligator? There's where price crossed through there, and I do that. Okay, so now what you see is you can see that price has been moving away from the alligator. Okay, so you can see it's been gradually moving away. So I have diversions here, so I've got quite a big opening here. You can use the, the jaw for this as well, um, but you're not going to use the lips. So the lips is not really what you're looking for. So you're kind of looking either the teeth or the jaw or in between here. I like using the teeth. I like using the red line as my, my um, signal. Okay. So that there is wise man number one. Okay. Now... Just to clean the chart up, I'm going to delete that. That's wise man number one. Where is my entry? My entry is on a break above that bar, and my stop is below this bar. But now, use a bit of logic here. We have a level here, so just move your stop below the level. You will see that this is probably only a well, 76 point stop loss, so it's a relatively small stop loss. Now, the, the trick with wise man number one is you are actually going against trend. Okay? You can see, I mean, if I shut off everything to the right here like that, if you look at the awesome oscillator, everything's red, all pointing down to the downside, indicating that momentum is down, to the downside. Price has been running to the downside. So you are basically placing a trade counter trend at this stage. It breaks up. Okay, maybe we have correct setup. And from price action perspective, you know that there's going to be a second move to the downside, and there it comes. Okay, and it basically formed a double bottom, which is now starting to give uh, validation to your wise man number one. Wise man number one is a, a small entry, so it's not a, it's not a normal entry, it's not, so it's not a normal size of the entry that you're looking for, but it's a small entry. Um, that you can afford to take a stop loss with with a smile if it does happen. Okay. Now, what we're looking for now is to add to this trade with the wise man number two signal. And wise man number two signal is basically the awesome oscillator. What I'm looking for is the third green bar. Okay, so let's move this back into the center here. And I will put it in a line. So I'm looking for the third green bar. So there's the first one. There's the second one. There's the third one. Okay. So this big green bar here is my second signal bar. So that is my second wise man. So wise man number two is now over there at a break of that level okay and obviously your stop needs to be below this bar so essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this stop up to entry basically and leave it here okay as soon as we break above and you can see we, we pretty much broke the next bar and then we retrace slightly and then moved up okay so, and this does often happen. You know, there was a breakout here as well. So you can start applying yourself, um, your, your levels as well. You can see we've had a breakout level, so price action dictates that you're probably going to come back and test this area. But the minute we break above here, wise man number two is in effect. Okay, in this scenario that I'm showing you here, there is no wise man number three. And I'll get to that now. So there was my first entry. There's my second entry. Right. Now, my exit. You can see a potential wise man signal bar there. That pin bar. The bulls were in charge. They pushed it up. And then the bears took charge of this bar. Okay. The minute they took charge of this bar, I want to look for diversions. So the first thing I do is where did we cross through? There's where we crossed through. Okay, so you can see where we crossed through the head in this area here. Cross through there. 
I want my second line drawn. What happened with the red line here? So from the same point here, in actual fact, at this point it would have been down here because the red line would have been over here. Okay, so now you can see that we have big diversions again. So that in other words, price is moving away from the red line. That is wise man number one. Okay, so let's just move this, or we'll copy it rather. So there is wise man number one. Okay, where is your entry? Let's just get rid of the circle. Your entry is below, a break below there. Okay, now again, stop loss. And notice how I am giving myself a little bit of wiggle room above this high. Because you can see how price likes to come and test this area. Okay. And if you look to the, the left here, there was a level to the top here. So there's a level to the bottom. That swing low there. And that's where price was. And there is another level on the top here. So what you could argue... What you could argue is to keep your stop at 130 points, so keep your stop above that next level. Okay, so your, your stop strategy needs to stick to your, your risk profile. So this one you could leave the stop here. Um, if it did squirt up to touch this area, you'd be looking for the next wise man to get in. Okay, so that's wise man number one. Now we're looking for wise man number two okay and again wise man number two comes on the third red bar there okay so that is wise man number two so what we want to do here I'll do that is we have an entry on the break below there so this bar here would have triggered you in on the trade and it would have moved to the downside straight away. Okay, um, these are pretty close, so your, your stop would have been still pretty much in the same area, so above this pin bar here, essentially. Okay, so that is uh, wise man number two, so let's just copy that. So there is wise man number two, and we'll even add a little arrow in here to indicate that. Okay, now, wise man number three. Wise man number three is essentially a fractal break. Now, fractals are pretty easy to to grasp. There are relatively complex um, setups for the fractals. So the best advice I can give if you want in-depth knowledge on fractals is to go and look for the for Bill Williams's book um, theory of uh, chaos of trading, and he defines him pretty well in there. He, there's also a couple of YouTube videos of where he gives some lectures where he goes through uh, fractal setups and what they are. Okay, so essentially, a fractal is made up of five bars, and those five bars. What I'm looking for is as follows. So I'm looking this here is a fractal. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a low, then I'm looking for two higher lows on the left and two higher lows on the right. I'm not interested in anything else except the low of the bar. So you can see there's a low, which is higher than that one. There's a low, which is higher than this one. And the same on this side. So that is a fractional. Okay. Um, then this over here is a fractional to the upside. You can see I have a double top here although this one is slightly lower, okay, but I have a low and a low, I have a low and a low, so so it's a lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, so this is a fractal to the top, this is a fractal to the bottom. Where we got in here was a fractal to the downside, you can see there's a low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. This over here is a fractal to the upside, there's the high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Okay, so that is the typical scenario of a fractal. Now, you can have more than five bars in the pattern, and I'm not going to go into that now because um, 
essentially all you're looking for is even if there are six or seven bars in there, you want to you sort of want a finger bar up in the middle and you want price to be going down on either side for an up fractional and for a down fractional you want a finger bar and you want price heading up like this on either side okay so now in this scenario here well if i come back to our first example this was actually wise man number two and wise man number three you can see that's a fractional so there's a high a lower high lower high lower high lower high so that was a wise man two and three okay so wise man number three we look for the the closest fractional to where price is and it's this pin bar here okay so you can see there's the low higher low higher low higher low higher low so this here is a fractional so wise man number three's entry is a break of this fractional and um, let's just make that a little bit longer. So there is wise man number three. Okay, so the minute we broke through this, so you would have been triggered somewhere around, probably on this bar here. On the break of that, you would have been triggered. Now, you need to understand that the natural cycle of price is that will extend back up here. Okay. So let's just get wise man number three and move that to there. Okay. Now, the entry. So wise man number one would be a relatively small contract size. Wise man number two is basically the confirmation that your first entry was correct. So you increase the, the number of the your trade size. Okay. And then wise man number three, you'll add to your initial trade. Now, what you need to bear in mind, though, guys, is all three of these entries together, they still need to adhere to your risk profile, okay? Now, my risk profile is 3% of capital. So, in other words, in all my trades, open trades, that is, I don't want to be risking more than 3% of capital. So, if I'm trading um, the Aussie, uh, the Dow, and the DAX, then, and I've got three trades open, the combined risk of all three trades cannot be more than 3%. Okay, so you need to make sure that your entry strategy is well within your um, risk profile. Okay, now on very strong trends, you, you can keep looking for the wise man number three, and you can keep adding as it moves down, now sort of on every break. Okay, now what keeps you in this trade? What keeps you in this trade is the fact that you are staying below the alligator. Okay, now you can see on this side when we have an aggressive move to the upside, it's a very strong uptrend. We're far away from the alligator. When we like just gradually grinding down or up, we typically use the um, jaw or the teeth as a resistance area or a support area. Okay, so aggressive moves like this is an aggressive move here you can see we're staying far away from, uh, we're basically below the teeth, okay? And when we're sort of in a nice um, structured move down, then price typically sticks to um, either the jaw or the teeth, okay? And you can see how it moves to the downside. Um, in this scenario, your exit, uh, I mean, this here was a wise man signal. Okay, where this, yeah, you can see there is a wise man signal. Okay, this red bar, you can see how the bull, uh, the bears were in charge. So you, you would have exited these trades, pretty much as soon as that bar was broken. Okay, and you could very well have gotten into this, this trade. Okay, so sorry, there's something that I missed out on wise man number three and which is pretty important okay so the only time you take wise man number three is when the break of the fractional so in other words the break below this tail is also below the red line okay so if you're taking a fractional break to the downside this breakout here needs to happen below the red line okay if it doesn't happen below the red line 
So the red line, it is not a wise man number three. And conversely, we're moving to the upside. So you can see at this stage, this fractal is below the red line. But the break, which happens on this bar here, is above the red line. So the break needs to be above the red line. So a break of the fractal needs to be above the red line in order for it to be confirmation and validated that it's moving up. Okay, very important. And um, if I can find an example of one, I don't think we will. I haven't seen one in a while. So no, I don't, there's nothing here. But it's, it's very important to to understand that the break of the fractal. So you, you see the fractal there. Draw your line in for the fractal break, and then look where price is. In this scenario, price is definitely below the red line. That's fine. We're in. Okay. So this would have been um, this area here would have been your exit. You would have taken profit here and more than likely put a long in here for Wiseman number one. Now, it's important to show you this because there is Wiseman number two. Okay, so my entry is here. But look what happens here. Price moves to the downside. Okay, now for me, I would not have taken this trade. Okay, so you can see if we just take the diversions here, so where we cross through here, there, and where we cross through there, there. Now there is still diversions. Okay, so it's a valid wise man number one setup, definitely is a valid setup but it's not at a level. Okay, so to me that would have been an indication I need to get out, take my profit, and it may very well run to the upside, but that's irrelevant. I've banked my profit, my money's in my, in my pocket, and it stays that way. Okay, you can see how this sort of got towards the blue line here, and then reversed and continued down. Okay, so another way that people do this is they will keep moving their stop. Um, they'll keep moving it below that fractal. Oh, sorry, above this fractal, above this fractal, above this fractal. Okay, but now look at this. So I'm above this fractal here, which is pretty much on my entry for this car here. The profit that I am in at this stage is an extra 200 points. And we know we have been ranging quite extensively. So, you know, the question is, do I maintain my stop there? Which a lot of people do. And you see the signal here and you actually hold on to it and wait for it to happen. You know, wait for your stop to be taken out. What do you take profit here? Okay, so for me, you know, if I see a setup like that, I'll get out of the market, but I not I won't get in on the market because we are not near a level. Okay, we may be at a five-minute level. You can see there, we're at a five-minute, so there is a, a five-minute level there where we took profit. So when you're trading a five-minute like this, you know, that's where your, your target area would have been. Yes, it moves up and, and moved down, and you would have lost out on an additional, uh, what's this, 100 points, but you would have banked um, 300 points from wise man number one. Okay, so that's kind of how I, um, how I approach the wise man. I hope it makes sense to you. And again, guys, the most important part of this is the levels. And I'm just going to just touch on levels quickly as to what I define as a level. I just want to clean up the mess. Okay. So I will be trading the six minutes. And often what I do is I look for levels either on the hour. Okay. Or on the three hour chart. And you can see what I mean. You know, we're kind of gently trending to the upside. 
but nothing really right home about. Okay, now uh, one, on the hour, so you can see my level is there, which we pretty much were close to, and then we came back and tagged it. My next level would be here. So if I had a, a wise man signal, wise man number one signal in this area here, I definitely would take it. Okay. Now, one last thing before we go is there is another way of using the the wise man's um, signals, or sorry, the the um, chart patterns as a, a wise man signal. Okay. And I'm going to just highlight them for you on the one hour here. So there you have a the bulls were in charge, and then we moved to the downside. Okay, and um, you're looking here where we crossed the head there. And if you look here, oh, green line. Okay, not great diversions, but there is a little bit of diversions nevertheless. But the one that I really want to show you is this little pattern here. So you often hear of flags. There is a flag. Okay. And now take your diversion from where we went through the alligator head here, a long price. Okay. And then do the same along the red line. Look at that. So you can use the same scenario with the alligator when you see patterns playing out like this. So it could be a double top, it could be a flag. Um, and then I've seen it play out in the head and shoulders. So he has a double top scenario. And again, same thing. If you draw your trend line through the alligator head along price. Okay, and you can see how the, we've got this signal bar here. The, the bear stepped in. And I draw it like that. You can see how the diversions plays out. Okay, so that is... Um, one of the best ways I find of getting on the right side of the trend and then staying on the right side of the trend. And if we look at what is about to happen, so we just need to tidy up here. Um, so if we look at the hour right now, you can see how we have broken through the alligator. We are below the alligator. And typically when we are below the alligator, the alligator is hungry. And you can see at the moment alligator is starting to be hungry. He was sleeping here, he's hungry, he's pointing to the downside. So my bigger trend is the downside. So when you come down to the lower time frames, you know, a move to the upside right now is really a scalp. And the move to the downside is longer and more steady because that is the trend at this stage. Anyway, guys, that is the wise men number one, two, and three. I hope it helps. If you liked it, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up or yeah, drop us a comment. Always appreciate the comments. Anyway, catch you guys later.